Hello? This is Immaculate, a film that's terrifying, captivating, and most importantly, much more than meets the eye. This movie is an allegory for the plague of religious trauma that's all too common among the Gen Z and millennial generations. After leaving the theater, I spent hours going through reviews and deep dives and was surprised to find out just how many people seemingly missed this crucial part of the theme. So, being the overthinking film major that I am, I began writing to share with you my analysis and interpretation of Immaculate. As you may already know, the story of Immaculate is a roller coaster with one of the most shocking endings of all time. But, in case you're unaware or just need a refresher, here's a quick recap of the film's plot. Immaculate follows Cecilia, a deeply religious woman who is preparing to fully devote her life to God through the process of becoming a nun. She's from Detroit, but travels all the way to Italy in order to join a convent there. For those of you who don't know, Italy is a very important place for Catholicism. Not only are roughly 80% of Italian citizens Catholic, but it's also home to the Pope, Vatican City, and some of the most beautiful churches and cathedrals they have to offer. Cecilia arrives at the convent and receives a fairly cold welcome. Further isolating her is the fact that only about half of the holy people residing there can actually speak English. Despite this though, she remains very excited and faithful as she prepares herself to give her vows that evening. Cecilia enters into this film with an overwhelming sense of innocence and naivety. She fully believes that everyone within the convent has intentions just as genuine and as noble as her. However, she soon finds out that that's not the case. After taking her vows, Sister Cecilia drinks wine and shares her backstory with a priest named Father Saul. Apparently, when she was young, Cecilia survived a traumatic event in which she suffocated and was later revived at the hospital. She believes that God brought her back to life for a reason and since then she has devoted her life to him in order to find out what that reason may be. Father Saul is taken aback by this and states that he believes she'll soon find out what her purpose is now that she's become a part of the convent. We also get a bit of his backstory here, as he mentions that he was a biologist before becoming a priest. After this, Cecilia walks into the temple in which she finds a nun kneeling before a relic in a case. Another nun appears behind them and explains that the relic is actually a nail which was driven into the hand of Christ at the time of his crucifixion. Suddenly, Cecilia falls to the ground and passes out. The next morning, she awakes and goes through her day semi-normally until she gets sick and vomits while bathing. She's brought to the on-site doctor who heavily suspects that Cecilia is pregnant. After heavy questioning to ensure that she's not broken her vow of chastity, it is decided that Cecilia's child was conceived without sin, thereby making this a miracle. As the name of the film would imply, it is assumed that this is an immaculate conception, something that hasn't happened since Mary gave birth to Jesus Christ. People become very skeptical of this quickly, as does Cecilia, but then things start to get a little… weird, to say the least. One nun even attacks Cecilia, screaming about how it should have been her. As more and more scary things begin to happen and the church refuses to allow her to go to an actual hospital, Cecilia's only friend at the convent speaks out against them. She's ushered away by a group of nuns and disappears for a little while, until one night when Cecilia wanders around outside. She stumbles across a small room and then peers in to see her friend being tortured. Horrified by this, Cecilia is now determined to leave. So, the following morning, she stages a fake miscarriage. Obviously, she's rushed to the hospital, but on the way, it is found out that she actually used animal blood to make it appear as if the baby had passed while in the womb. 
Father Saul prepares to turn the car around, but Cecilia jumps out and attempts to run away, before being caught and dragged back to the convent. After this, she's shamed for having frightened everyone, and then shown the truth of what's actually happening here. As mentioned earlier, Father Saul was a biologist. Also being deeply religious and anticipating the return of Christ, he became obsessed with reviving Jesus. So. He used the relic from earlier to harvest Jesus' DNA and attempted to create several babies, but the only successful one was the one within Cecilia. It's implied that most of the older women within the convent had at one point attempted to carry the second coming of Christ, but obviously failed. Father Saul then burned Cecilia's feet with a branding iron, making her wheelchair bound and he implies that after she carries the baby to term, he will kill her. Cecilia is obviously disgusted by this, and she snaps as she plans her escape, leading into the gory third act. In this part of the film, Sister Cecilia goes on a murderous rampage in order to escape the convent undetected. However, when Father Saul catches on to what she's doing, he chases her until she eventually gets the better of him and offs him as well. During the struggle though, her water breaks and she soon gives birth to the baby. But in a twisted turn of fate, it is implied that the child isn't fully human and may be instead some sort of beast. So in her manic state, Cecilia decides that the best course of action is to smash the infant with a rock. Roll credits. Yeah, so not the lightest note to end a film on, but this isn't just horror for the sake of shock value. As stated in the beginning of the video, I believe that this film is actually a commentary on the modern societal issue of religious trauma. But what exactly is religious trauma? It's a term that gets thrown around all the time now, but it's a little bit more complicated to define than you might think. On the most basic level, Religious trauma is a term that refers to an incredibly scarring or tragic event from a person's past that's related to a negative experience within their church or faith. This typically takes place when the traumatized person is very young and leaves a sour taste in the victim's mouth when it comes to the concept of religion as a whole. While this can come directly from the church, it's more often found in broken familial dynamics based on religious beliefs. There's a myriad of instances in which people have been both physically and verbally abused by churchgoers and parents alike. This could be for things as simple as asking questions, the way that they dress, skin color, or even just a difference of opinion. The primary source of this abuse comes from religious bigotry, an all too common occurrence in which believers use their religion as an excuse to validate the hatred of others. For example, in the 1800s, many Protestant denominations began teaching that black people, who were at the time slaves in the US, bore the mark of Cain, meaning that they were descended from the first murderer, and that's why both their skin looks that way, and why it was okay to treat them as, you know, slaves. Of course that is incredibly ignorant, but it's still a belief that's held by some today, and it's a great example of a belief held exclusively to confirm and validate a pre-existing hatred of others. Today, however, it's more common to use Bible verses as an excuse to attack gay people. I'm sure you've seen this type of discourse online or in the news. People threatening their openly gay peers with eternal damnation in hellfire should they not convert and denounce their identity as a member of the LGBT community. This bigotry, verbal, and physical abuse is what I believe to be causing the rapid decline in religious people in my generation. About one third of the Gen Z population has no religion at all and a huge amount of them cite some form of religious trauma as the reason why this is. Of course, that's not just from Christianity. This is an issue that stems across every Western religion, including Islamic and Jewish traditions as well. So I can already hear you asking, how does Sidney Sweeney's Immaculate tie into all of this? Well, let's just take a look at the characters. At the beginning of the film, Cecilia is a fresh-faced, optimistic new member of the church. At least, this particular one. 
It's clear from her many differences that she still has plenty to learn to fully assimilate, but the other nuns don't take too kindly to that. At this time, Cecilia is representative of a young person just beginning their journey with their faith. She's optimistic and assumes that despite the congregation's cold demeanor, they still have nothing but the best intentions for her. Of course, she'd soon come to find out that in this hyperbolic representation of a church, basically no one cares for her well-being. So let's go over some of these people and the types of trauma that they represent. Father Saul is the characterization of religious bigotry. He was a deeply religious man who mistook scripture and used his own misinterpretation as an excuse to attack people. Similarly to how harmful assumptions about the identities of others can cause religious people to abuse those who are dissimilar, Saul incorrectly assumed that it was the responsibility of man to resurrect Christ. Therefore, he took the opportunity to impregnate, brand, and even torture the nuns all in an attempt to do what he believed was for the best, forgetting that the Bible has directly called him to, you know, not physically assault or take advantage of other people. To me, this reads as a clear parallel to those who forget that they're called to be kind and tolerant of all people, instead utilizing scripture as an excuse to hurt others, unintentionally turning them away from faith. Sister Gwen, Cecilia's friend from earlier, is representative of someone who has been excommunicated. Despite this taking place in a convent, we see this type of toxicity less in Catholicism and more in ultra-conservative denominations such as the Mennonite Church, a group of Christians who utilize only traditions and technology from the 1900s. It's important to note that not all Mennonites operate this way, just select unreformed groups. In other words, if you're a Mennonite viewing this video, I'm not talking about you. Mennonites live in communities known for their isolation from modernity and strict rules. If someone within the community were to speak out against it or break one of the many rules, they'd be cast out and never allowed to speak with their families, friends, or anyone they've ever known ever again. On top of that, they'll be ridiculed and shamed for their crimes against God. For obvious reasons, this is another big cause of religious trauma, just in a more niche sect of Christianity. The nuns isolating Gwen by bringing her into a confined space is an example of excommunication, and the following torture of Gwen is representative of the attacks that everyone within the community, in this case the convent, launches on the excommunicated individual. And lastly, as I touched on briefly earlier, Cecilia is the representation of a person driven away from her faith due to religious trauma. As we established, she began fresh-faced and excited to become more in tune with her faith. But, due to the manipulation of bad actors within the convent, she completely turns away from God. I think that last scene with The Rock is by far the most indicative of this, because not only has she completely left the convent, but she is smashing what little remains of her time there. She is smashing the very representation of her religion. In universe, the implication that this baby is actually a beast is also very telling. This child, which was supposed to be the pure embodiment of all things good, due to the manipulation of others, is now presumably evil. Some people online even theorize that she gave birth to the Antichrist, which would lend even more to this concept. Because this convent, through all of their actions in the film, took something holy and beautiful and turned it into the antithesis of what they held so dear. They created their own worst enemy, and what comes next is left completely ambiguous. From what I've seen, a lot of people seem to be offended by this film. Taking it at face value, it certainly does seem like shock value for the sake of it. Not helped by the constant jump scares, by the way. However, when you really think about it, this film really does have a lot to say. It's just that the horror genre and hyperbolic tone could make it come across in a bit of a sacrilegious way. Although, I don't really think that that's the point. This film is highlighting a big problem within religious communities of all types, the primary reason why, with each passing generation, we have less and less people identifying themselves with a particular religion. Though, if I can be critical for a minute, 
I think that the shocking tone of this film doesn't really convey that to the right audience. People who are religious will probably avoid this one. And even if they do see it, I sort of doubt that they'll really think about the deeper connotations behind it because of how brutal, gory, and depending on your stance on the matter, potentially disrespectful it is. People who aren't religious, on the other hand, may very well watch it and get this perspective from it. However, at that point, you're kind of just preaching to the choir. With all that said, though, I did like this film, and I would recommend it to anyone who doesn't have a problem with gore. If you want to see another analysis video I've done, you can click on the recommended video right here. Also, thank you so much to my members, or member, it's just Alan right now, listed here on the right. Big shout out to Alan. Hope you're enjoying your members exclusive videos and other content. Trust, there's more on the way. If you want to be as cool as Alan, you can hit that join button to get all of the benefits that you see here. But without much more to say, Thanks so much for watching, remember to subscribe, and believe to achieve!